Hi, this is Jose Luis and welcome to a new hands-on exercise video on the serious introduction to parametric modeling. In this video, I would like you to show you the how to implement a technique that is commonly referred to as attraction repulsion, which is basically a way of saying that uh, the geometry or the size of certain objects are affected by the distance of their centers to another point that is typically referred to as the attractor or the repulsor. So an example of that can be, for example, the fact that I have a bunch of points here that are the centers for circles, and those circles have a radius that is proportional to how far away they are from this point. So you can see that as I move the point closer to some of the circles, those circles become smaller, whereas the ones that are farther away become larger, right? Um, uh, another take on that can be the opposite, it can be, well, maybe what we want is to create geometry that whenever it's very close to that point, then it just grows much larger. And then whenever it's farther away, it just grows shorter. So we can create, for example, this kind of interplay between that. And another example can be to, for example, just play with, um, just play with working with arrays of geometry where some of their properties are mediated by the distance to different attractor points. So what you see in this exercise here is that the cubes, uh, di the x distance is mediated by, is affected by one attractor point, the y distance is affected by another attractor point, and their c height is also affected by another attractor point. By using these three attractor points, I can modify the dimensions of these objects and then bake them into uh, a result that is actually um, what is shaded. Uh, into a result that uh, uh, render, yes, into a result that gives me this kind of variability, which is actually quite nice and depends on, as I was saying, the distance to three different attractor points. So this is going to be super simple. It's just going to involve creating geometry, calculating distance between them, and then factoring that distance to 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 tame the effect and to keep it under control. So let's take a look at how uh, we can implement that. Okay, before we start writing any grasshopper definition, what I would like to take, uh, I would like to take a closer look at what do I mean by attraction and repulsion as a technique, because you're going to hear this a lot out there in, in, the, out there in the wild. So it turns out that this technique is basically a technique that is that what represents is that if you have a collection of geometries, one of the features or one of the properties of those geometrical objects, such as, for example, the radius, the height, some dimension, whatever that is, one of those properties is typically defined by the relation of the centers of those geometries to some other external reference point. That other external reference point is typically referred to as the attractor or the repulsor. And then given how far away that point is to the center of all the other reference points, that distance is typically used as what mediates how big or how small any of those features of those geometries are. So for example, let's say I have the collection of points here, which is the black ones. Those are going to be the centers of some circles, for example. And then I have this other point, which is the attractor or the repulsor, which is the red one. Okay, so I can write very simple rules to say, let me first calculate the distance between that point to all the other points. And then using that distance, what I can do is I can set that the radius of the circles that I'm going to set on top of my center points are going to be somehow proportional to that distance. So that the points that are closer are going to have smaller circles and the points that are farther away will have larger circles. That is, in a nutshell, that is what it's typically referred to as attraction and repulsion out there in the wild. And then the thing is that there are many ways this can be mediated and those are the difference between whether if it's an attraction, a repulsion, etc., etc. And I will show you different ways of uh, working with this and using this technique to our advantage. So let's see how would we do that, for example, with a grasshopper definition. 
Okay, I have a blank Rhino model and I have a blank Rhino Grasshopper uh, Grasshopper definition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create here a bunch of points. So what I'm doing is I'm left clicking to create a point and I'm right clicking to trigger the command again. And these are all going to be my initial points. So are going to be the base points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them in here with an empty point parameter. I'm going to right click, I'm going to set multiple points and I'm just going to select all of this. And the order doesn't matter because I'm not using, I'm not going to care about the order in this case. And so this is going to be, for example, this is going to be the, the main point. And, um, and then, oops, sorry about that. These are going to be my main points. And then I'm going to create another point. This one is going to be a special. I'm going to place it, for example, somewhere here. And then I'm going to bring this in a different box because this has to be treated differently. This is going to be the attractor. Okay. All right. So what I can do now is, um, as I said in my diagram, what I can do is I can calculate the distance between this point and all the other points. So how could we do that? Well, with the things that we have learned so far, what we could do is we could just simply create primitive lines between the attractor point and all the other main points. And you can see how now I have all these lines. And if I move my attractor point, uh, then all the um, all these lines update dynamically, which is kind of nice. And then if I go to curve and analysis, I could just measure the length of each one of these curves. So that would be here. And then if I plug a panel, you can see that now I have the lengths of each one of those lines. Okay. So that's one way to go. And I'm actually going to leave this here just for the sake of visual flavor, even though I'm actually not going to use it because there is another component. If we go to the vector tabs and if we go to points, you can see that there is a component that simply calculates the Euclidean distance between two point coordinates. So if I actually place this one here and I say, I want to calculate the distance between point A and all the points in B, you're going to see that if I collapse this panel and I copy paste it here and I plug the distance one, I have the exact same values. So this one is a little faster, a little easier, a little leaner to do. So I have calculated the distances between the attractor point and all the other main points. So what can I do with that now? Well, why don't I use that distance to draw circles on top of those points? So let me just go ahead and say, I'm going to, I'm going to go to curves. I'm going to go to primitives and I'm going to find circles and I'm going to create circles defined by the plane where they are and their radius. So I'm going to place that here. And then I'm going to say this, the center is going to be each one of these elements. Oh, sorry. I am plugging in, sorry. I am plugging in the distance. So I want to plug in, the center is going to be the main points. And then you can see that what I want now is that instead of the radius being a hard coded one, I want the radius to be proportional to those distances. So if I plug the distances here, check out what's going to happen. Boom. What? What is going on here? Well, if I highlight this, you can see that something very interesting happened. What happened is that because I plugged in the exact distance of to the attractor, then every circle is actually having a radius that is the exact distance. And therefore, all the circles are actually touching physically the attractor point here. Okay, if I turn this off, you can see how all the circles are actually uh, hitting the exact same point, the attractor. Okay, this is not exactly what we drew in the diagram. In the diagrams, our circles were a little smaller. So why is that? Well, what we need to do is instead of using the exact distance as the radius, we need to use a factor of that distance. By a factor, I mean we need to reduce all those distances proportionally in a similar way. So how can I do that? That is very simple. I can just create a slider 
So I'm going to click here a slider and oops, not a, not a two dimensional slider, a single dimensional, a number slider. And then a number slider is already by default from zero to one, which is kind of convenient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all these distances, for example, for, by 0 0.5. So I'm going to multiply those distances by half. Therefore, I get a I get a set of distances that is half the values, and I use that as the radii. And you can see now that um, all the circles are now smaller proportionally. And if I reduce all of this, you can see that they all reduce proportionally as well. But the ones that are closer to the attractor are much smaller than the ones that are farther away. And what's also interesting about this, and this is where the attractor repulsion technique works, is that if I start moving this point, you see how the sizes start affecting, start changing proportionally. So now these two circles are really small, whereas this one just grew. And if I move it farther away, you see how these ones grow much farther. But if I bring this point closer to here, obviously these two circles get much smaller and these ones get much bigger. So I have written a rule that uses the distance between their centers to an attractor point as the rule to drive how big these circles are. Okay, so that is one thing. Um, another thing could be whether maybe instead of using the diameter of the in the diameter of the circles, what I want to do is I just want to use, for example, the height of a cylinder. So what I can do, for example, is I'm going to say I'm going to place cylinders. I'm going to place cylinders. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to hide this with Ctrl Q. I'm going to place cylinders on these points here. So I'm going to place cylinders here. All right. And the radius of all of them is going to be some hard coded, some value that I control. So for example, these are the radius. All, they all have the same radius. But what I would like to do is I would like their height to be proportional to that distance. So I can take the distance that I calculated, I can take those distances and then just plug them right away into the cylinders. And now you can see how those cylinders, the ones that are farther away are taller and the other ones are uh, smaller. So now if I move my point, they can, the closer I get to any base, then the closer I get, the, um, the shorter that cylinder is. Okay. All right. That is another very simple, another very simple attraction repulsion rule. Now, sometimes what we want is the actual opposite effect. So what you're seeing here is that the cylinders that are very close to the attractor are very short and the cylinders that are farther away just keep growing and growing linearly. And sometimes what we want is the inverse. What we want is the points that are close to the attractor to be really tall and the ones that are farther away to be shorter. This is kind of the difference between the, an attraction uh, and a repulsion, if you will. So how can we do that? Well, the only thing that we need to do is we need to flip the relation of the dimensions. So for example, if here, we said that the length is directly proportional to the distance. So in numerical terms, if we say that the length of the cylinder is going to be exactly the same, is going to be the length is going to be exactly the same to the distance. What that means is that whenever the length grows, then the consequence of that is that the distance is also going to grow. Actually, it's the let me say that is the other way around. So whenever, whenever the distance grows, what that implies is that the length of the cylinder is also going to grow. But what I actually want is the opposite to this, I want the opposite, I want whenever the distance grows, the effect that I want is for the length to decrease. To be shorter. So the way I can do that is by flipping 
the relation between these elements and say, if instead of doing L equals the distance, if what I do is, and I'm going to move this here, if instead of that, what I do is that the length is going to be equal to one divided by the distance, then what will happen is that whenever the distance increases, it becomes a larger number, one divided by a larger number becomes a smaller number. So then the length is going to decrease. So if I just change the numerical relation and the length is going to be one divided by the distance, then we will see the opposite effect. How does that work? Well, it's just really, really simple. We have here the distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide and division, I'm just going to divide, I'm just going to divide one and I'm just going to divide one by the distance. And that is going to give us, if these are, let's take a look at this numerically. If these are the distances, then you can see that now the division, after the division, for large numbers, we have a small number. And for smaller numbers, like this one, we have a larger number. So let's take a look at how that looks. So I'm going to plug this here as the length. And you can see that now, for example, the one in the center is much larger. Okay. And the ones that are farther away are shorter. And if I put this closer here, this one is also growing. The problem is that the numerical range that we have used here, one divided by anything is always going to be smaller than one, which is kind of a bummer. So what we can do is like we can amplify this by just creating a number slider. But you're creating a number slider that goes, for example, from zero to 10. And then using that number as what we divide by. So instead of one, we're going to divide 10 by this value, for example. And then if this is going to give us proportionally how we grow out. So for example, here or here, these two are going to be larger and then here, or I can just crank this up a little bit to 100. Okay. And then you can see how now each one of these, because we are cranking up the factor, the ones that are very close, just grow a lot. And the ones that are not, the ones that are farther away, just are much shorter. Okay. Okay, and as a bonus to this exercise, I would like to show you a quick example that I just made offline right now. Uh, in this example, what I'm basically doing is I just created a grid and then I used the center of each one of those points on the grid to create boxes. All right. The, what, what's nice about these boxes is that the dimension in each one of the directions in X and Y and C is actually driven by the distance to three attractor points that I have here in Rhino. So I have one, two, three. Each one of them was imported here into Rhino, into Grasshopper. Each one of them has a different factor for how much it affects the dimension. So how strong that attraction or that repulsion is. And therefore, uh, by now, what's interesting is that by moving each of these points, what I can do is I can change the distribution of how strongly each one of the dimensions is affected. So you can see if I put them all together here, then this is basically small cubes and this is large cubes. But if I move each one of them to the corners of the exercise, you can see that these are very thin in one direction. These are very thin in the other direction. These are very thin in the Z direction. So you can see how the variability that we are achieving here is kind of nice. And I can now bake this into, I can bake this, I can group them. And then if I turn everything off and I switch to ghosted view or to render view, I can have like a really nice distribution of these cubes in 3D space of sorts, which I think it's kind of nice. All right. So attraction and repulsion is a very common technique to create variability between 
different objects, different collections of geometry. And it's just very simple. The only thing that it does is it works by um, making the, those a certain property of the geometry based off the distance to a particular attractor point. The only thing that I have not done in this exercise is some other, other technique that is very popular, which is instead of changing the size of the elements, changing the position, if you will, or using the attractor and the repulsion as a point that attracts geometry, it drags it into itself or it pushes it away. We haven't done that because we have not still seen how to move geometry around, but we will see that in further videos. Okay. So with that, I think I'm happy with this exercise and I think I'm going to move on to more hands-on exercises in this series, Introduction to Parametric Modeling. Okay. If you like what you saw, maybe consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, etc., etc. Okay. Thanks a lot and see you on the next video.